9.40 a.m. I've been awake for more than 20 minutes, so I don't know why people are asking. I think yeah, I would say that we do not throw out the sleepy uh, accusations around here. Yeah, uh, no shade, please. Gosh, some people. <laughs> um, how the hell are you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Got myself. Dude. I got three different drinks for the podcast, so very got, good. Um, big glass of warm lemon water, which is how I mm-hmm. start the day every day. Oh, okay. Seltzer. Uh, Seltzer always. Treat. You want to see me drink this whole glass of water? Right now, got to take it down. It's very good. So far, so good. Halfway there. Ooh, thumbs up. He's 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 doing well. Ooh, going. Starting to see the bottom. Beautiful. <sighs> Absolutely beautiful. Woo! Well, that's, a, that's a great way to kick it off. I'd say. Phlegm, mm-hmm. gone. Gone. Dude, we love, we love to hear it. We Where love to go? see it. Can't find it. Don't care. Don't care. We don't need it anyways. Speaking of stuff that's hard to find right now, what's one well, of the most impressive things? <laughs> Your dog has ever found. A dog of yours has ever found. Yes. And I, I want the audience um, to also think on this. My my sweet little girl, Penelope. Um, God rest her soul. Incredible dog. Little mm-hmm. puggle, all black. Lived to be 15 years old. Incredible, uh, incredible dog. I could just go on for so long. We'll definitely put a mm-hmm. picture of Penelope up. Um, one time we were on a walk and she came back with, and she's like 30 pounds, right? And she came back with a little <laughs> deer leg in her mouth. Oh. And it was wow. really funny. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. I was so impressed. I was so proud of her. And I mm-hmm. could tell she was proud of herself. And that's really As she should be. As she should be. <laughs> As mean, she should be. It was just, she was a good hunter. I'll give it to her. She knew what she was doing. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason I asked that question, I want the audience sure. to think about that, is, you know, I live in Wyoming. So I hear. V- very known fact. Tom possibly living in Wyoming. Who knows? Oh Future's still bright. <laughs> but <laughs> there is a special animal that lives out here in Wyoming. Um, and it was discovered by a dog. No way. So the story goes... There's this dog named Shep. It's 1981. Shep. S-H-E-P. Shep. Shep. Like, possibly short for shepherd. Probably. But he's just an old farm dog. We're, you know, we're in the little little town of Matitsi, Wyoming. Sure. And it's yeah. September 26th, 1981. And... Boots. You let Shep out. They they go out roaming, and he comes back with an animal, okay. small animal, little guy. And the owners, for the life of them, they don't know what this animal is. Sure. Do you know what this animal is? Um. Probably a toad. It is not a toad. It keep is talking. a I gotta mammal. Close my door. All good. But you can keep talking. <laughs> I'll keep talking. You keep talking. So, what do these owners do? They do the responsible thing, and they call their local game warden. They talk to the wildlife experts. So they call some official o- um, officials over. They're talking about their dog. Shep just mm-hmm. snagged this species. We don't know what this is. It looks like. A ferret of some sort. Ooh, a ferret. It's a ferret. Well, the game warden and the wildlife experts are kind of in shock right now. Yeah. They've when they see this. They've never seen this ferret before. This is the black-footed ferret. The black-footed ferret. The black-footed ferret thought to be extinct <laughs> at the time. Whoa. That's so Shep found yeah. an extinct species living. Dude, Shep rocks. Shep rocks. Shep did it. Shep knows Can we what he's have doing. Have him on the podcast? Uh, unfortunately, no. 
Why? Shep keeps a very he keeps a very personal life. Not no media not, allowed. It's not because he's dead. Probably too. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the most depressing thing ever. Whenever I see a dog in a movie, like my first thought is, "Oh, that dog's dead." <laughs> yeah, that is unfortunate. <sighs> yeah. But this dog, oh, you know, at least he he left a legacy. Look, look, you know, better to burn out than fade away. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Shep, um, Shep actually gently catches a thought to be extinct ferret species. Um, That's incredible. Which is pretty wild because normally when you let your dog out, you imagine them go to the bathroom, bark a little mm-hmm. bit, come home. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, it actually turns out that the Blackfooted Ferret, scientific name, Mustela nigripes, um, is a very small animal, very elusive animal. Just a little so about eighteen to, tw- It really is. I say it's about 18 to 24 inches long, uh, one and a half to two and a half pounds big. So, light and long and elusive. This is one of the north america's um most endangered mammal species yeah wow of all time and Ouch. again they they thought that it was an extinct species at the time wow and that's, it's it's another instance nice. mm-hmm. it's, it's probably have... a big confidence booster <laughs> yeah major didn't we have um a recent instance of a uh a bird Somebody saw a bird that hasn't been seen in a while. I think so. I think there was a bird that was found. I also know that there was a mole that has just been found. Um, oh that yeah, I went also to the dermatologist. To you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the black-footed ferret. It's another instance of. They had numbers ranging in the tens of thousands. It was uh-huh. a pretty decent-sized population back in their heyday. Um, they live in prairie dog burrows, and prairie dogs make up 90% of their diet. So they are they are pretty wow. entwined to this other species. So they eat they, them and then take their houses? Mm-hmm. Reduce, reuse, <laughs> recycle. <laughs> they must be friends with the Israelis. Oh gosh, <laughs> topical. <laughs> I'll probably edit that one out, but I couldn't resist. Um, but yeah, so prairie dogs and blackfooted ferrets are pretty like intertwined, right? Yeah. Now you've been out west for a little bit now. This is true. What do you? What What are the opinions of Western people um, when it comes to prairie dogs? Um, I don't know. We don't really have too many prairie dogs up here, but I feel like probably people don't like love them because they do, don't they like carry uh, the plague sometimes? Is that? Sometimes. They They definitely can. Wasn't there an outbreak in like Tahoe of prairie dog plague, which is weird because I've never seen a prairie dog in Tahoe. They're, they're, They're underground. Were you underground? That's where fair point, Boots. Fair point. <laughs> That's why you're on the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so prairie dogs are pretty, pretty despised, um, especially from my anecdotal experience with them, uh, living in ranch communities and stuff like that. They're a pretty despised species um, due to the fact that they do carry plague. They do use re- natural resources. They eat grass. What else eats grass? The cows. People want to put their cows on pasture. So all of a sudden, a cow's out there eating what little grass is left because the prairie dogs have eaten some of it. And the other thing that's a really big nuisance is that animals break their legs in prairie dog holes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you break a cow's leg, you have to put that cow down. You don't want to keep doing that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're trying to, especially when you're trying to settle the West. Yeah. Because you need cows to settle the West. Then all you can do is make veal exactly and so of course settlers are coming out west what do they do they see the prairie dog colonies they see the prairie dogs and they decide let's 
kill them, poison them, you know, do everything we can to get rid of them. Okay. So they start killing off prairie dogs in mass amounts. And the Whoa. other thing that happens, I know when the when the European settlers come, they introduce diseases. Yeah. A tale as old as time. Super not chill. And, no. And so it kills off a ton of prairie dogs. Well, just droves and droves of them. But they reproduce pretty quickly. They, you know, they can have species bounce back. The yeah, black-footed yeah. ferret did not. Dang. Yeah. It, during this time period in the 1800s, it came out with the destruction of prairie dogs, came with the destruction of the black-footed ferret. Mm, so, so sad. You know, it, it is pretty sad because then they're just like, well, they're dead. They're done. They don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, too bad, so sad kind of attitude. Keep going, settling the West. Mm-hmm. So, back to Matitsu, Wyoming. Yeah. It's the 1980s. Wasn't it so annoying how people just, like, didn't care at all about the environment and were just like, let's beat it into submission. Exactly. Well, I mean, you have this idea of manifest destiny. You are going to, you know, settle. You're going to bring civilization to these wild lands because the wild is bad at the time. Um. Yeah. Which is pretty, 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 pretty poopy pretty, if you ask me. Pretty, pretty, super not chill, dang cool, yeah. fucking sick no. of them. Yeah, kind of, kind of sucks. If we're gonna be honest, that 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 happened, yeah. and it's not until much later that we start doing effort to fix this issue. Adds up. Because, you know, there were definitely conservationists and preservationists um at the time but they weren't the majority i think a lot of people can at least admit that something is going on with how people are interacting with the environment nowadays Mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case back then they were like there's plenty of animals yeah we're never gonna run out of them no no and you know we always say in the 1800s because that's probably the worst time period to be nature in North America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that did not look fun to be nature. Mm-mm. Um, but you know, we we we're in nineteen eighties, but we go back a little bit. Just a little bit. Now in nineteen seventy three, we're gonna kick it back to the seventies. It's pretty groovy. It's pretty groovy time. Because there's My some mustache would have fit in. There was a new law that just got passed. Mm-hmm. Or a new act. Do you know an mm-hmm. act got passed in 1973? All my mm-hmm. history buffs out there? Mm. Not me. Do you know? <laughs> no. No. That's all good. Oh, it wait. is the I feel like oh. it was a Richard Nixon thing. It is a Richard Nixon thing. I don't know Nixon what the thing. act was, but I do know surprisingly a... he had passed like some great environmental laws, but I don't remember which one. I say Nixon surprisingly enough did pass some pretty solid environmental policy for the time. Yeah. Everything else he did was kind of trash. Yeah. But like the one thing he like, did. I'm not a thief. That was cool. I'm yeah, not that, a was, crook. that was cool. Not yeah, a crook. That was, that was really cool. Yeah, he you know he got pardoned and everything. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But. What he passes in 1973 is the Environmental, uh, the Endangered Species Act. Yeah. Which is pretty big. Because it puts a lot of protection down for these species that are endangered or close to extinction. Because, nice. you know, you, we're losing species at a constant rate. And it's, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, impact by humans doing this. Yeah. yeah. And... So this act comes out in 1973. So, you know, we flash forward not even 10 years into the future. Back in Matitsi, Wyoming, 1981. Mm-hmm. Because of this entire environment, or the environment, the Endangered Species Act. Yeah. The federal government gets to launch a full-scale study. And it puts a in a lot what? of protections. Study. Oh, okay. Yep. So they're launching, they're putting up stuff. They're protecting these areas that they might be known to be in. And they give a lot of the uh, wildlife game management 
a lot of power to help out and maybe see if the species is not extinct. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is that they find the dead one from Shep, our pal Shep, the dog. Shep the dog. Shep the dog kicks off this whole thing. And what subsequently happens is five years. They are studying this area. They're in the prairie dog holes. They're setting up cameras. They're setting up traps. They're trying to find this animal. Mm -hmm. They finally find specimens in 1986. So it is about four years or five years after the study starts. Mm -hmm. But because these protections are put in place, because these people are allowed to work, they actually start finding species of, or not species, specimens, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But they find just the smallest population yeah. it's only 18 18 18 and that was thought to be the entire population of blackfoot fair in the world there were only 18 of them left whoa not and no it's not looking good but they find them and they start capturing them because they want to start doing some reintroduction yeah and they want to they want to maybe find some better spots for these animals. And they also maybe want to help them breed in captivity where they can make all the babies. I think they just wanted to watch, like, ferret, ferrets go at it. I think they're just Probably. Kind of freaky. And they even started cloning techniques. Yeah. Weirdos. So, you know, it's... It's tough to bring back this species they found. It's not yeah. a very... Because it's, it's it's a species that there's not much known about it. There's not a lot of examples that we could find in the wild. Obviously, we thought it was an extinct species. So when you get presented a species that I thought was to be gone forever, you really have no basis on how to bring them back. It's pretty tough. Yeah. Because right mm -hmm. now, since 1986, when they captured the 18 specimens... Mm -hmm. there are only 300 yeah and it's been almost 30 years whoa and that's wow. pretty low yeah. yeah and so yeah they like i said they've been re reproducing them in captivity they've been trying some cloning techniques they've been just trying anything to get new ferrets um, they also reintroduce them into protected lands in more of their historical habitats so the Great Plains, uh, Prairie Dog Burrows, stuff like that. They've been reintroducing them, and they're trying to reintroduce them in different parts of the country. So South Dakota, North Dakota, um, Wyoming, Montana, and other Great Plains kind of states with prairie dog populations. This reintroduction has proven to be somewhat successful. Um, but, there's always a but. Always a but. To have a fully healthy population to, you know, where we can take off the tag of endangered species, because that's what the Endangered Species Act does, is it labels these animals saying, hey, this is an endangered species, they are, you know, we're looking for certain numbers, and then um, depending on their population, how things are going, what the trend lines look like, they can take the tags off and put their efforts towards other species that are in need. You yeah. know, because they want to bring them back so that way we can just take the label <clears throat> off every species and say they're not endangered. They're not yeah. at risk of going extinct. Yeah. Um, but in order for that to happen, under the guidelines of the ESA of 1973, we need about yeah. 3,000 of these Blackfoot of ferrets in the wild. Whoa. So that does not mean they can be in captivity, being reproduced, all that right. kind of stuff. All 3,000 of those species need to be thrown out into the wild to have a normal life. Sure. So we're only out of 30 years of efforts on this species. We are only about 10% of where we should be. Which stinks. Cause we sad. Were, I know. It's not good because, you know, it's cool to see that we've, you know, brought so many back. Yeah. But it's a shame that it even happened. Yeah. Yeah. Those, it's um... kind of just this. Oh, Go uh, ahead. I was going to, 
Yeah, I was just gonna say those first few ferrets were in such like an awkward scenario where you just like get put in a cage and then some big monkey looks at you and he's like, I need you to f your cousin. <laughs> I know what Same happens. Species. You want to continue on the legacy? <laughs> get after it. I guess it was kind of like an Adam and Eve scenario, right? Because then, I mean, they were just like, hey, I need you to f your sister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they just some of them did some of them didn't some of them don't survive clearly y'all need to suck it up mm -hmm. it's for the species people for, yeah, that line never works for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah next time you're at a bar let us know the success story of you walking up to someone and going hey it's for the species you know, babe, the population's dropping here. It's increasing in China. What, what do you say, you sneeze for, for the species? Do we do it? Yeah, comment down below how successful that works out for you. Please. And we will be launching our new data app made for... <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, early Q1, <laughs> early Q1, made for <laughs> coming to a oh, man. iPhone. Oh, damn it, that's such a good name. <laughs> TM, TM, TM. TM. Yeah, TM, 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 TM. Patent pending, <laughs> patent pending, patent pending. <laughs> it's just going to say, what's your favorite, like the only question on it, what's your favorite animal? And then that's the person you have to go That's with. it. That's, that's it. it. That's no it. pictures, no nothing. nothing. Just what is favorite animal? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much yep and then a bunch of scientists will be staring at you at the same time just to make sure it's proper by done. scientists we mean us we're the yeah, scientists yeah, yeah. we have lab I coats I have a bachelor's is... of science <laughs> yeah exactly mine's in art but like art science come on same thing same thing you probably you'd want an artist watching much more than a scientist let's all be honest someone to appreciate let's be honest. what's happening yeah. Yeah, Boots and I get have the some proper real shots. Issues. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boots and I have real problems. We can't. This is the only way we feel. It's just, it's mm -hmm. That's why we did all. Anyway. Um, anyways, anyways, yeah. Uh, look for that app on the Google Play and uh, Apple App Store coming soon. Yep. Oh, yep. But yeah, this is just like one of those stories of like, you know, you never know what's out there. And we still have just so much undiscovered planet left. Mm -hmm. because again this was in someone's backyard they were just oh extinct species just chilling in the yep. backyard whoa I, i've been in my backyard i don't have any extinct species that, that i sucks. know of that you know of you need to get a dog i need to get a dog i need to get a dog name it shep yep and then it'll just bring me all the extinct species i need i mean think about what that would do for your career you'd be sad i mean it would be set i would be yeah. definitely set for life set for life it's that easy it's just that easy yeah um sick loving everything so far i want to be my friend had a weasel hey not a weasel yes. he had a ferret yeah say so you know anyone pet ferrets yeah my good bud joe beal had a ferret uh for a long time his name was Leopold. Mm. We like to call him the uh, silly sausage. That's fun. And That's very good. He was he was so fun. He was really sweet, and he loved to play, and um, he smelled, but that was all right. Yeah, I've heard that ferrets kind of have a weird stank to them. Yeah, I would say not the best pet to keep in your room, but Joe's just mm. kind of had that kind of energy that he could pull off keeping a ferret in his room, and everyone's like, yeah, that makes sense. I see the only uh, person I know who has a ferret. He has two ferrets, actually. Yeah, they he's do better in pairs. A he's a local legend. Um, I actually always forget his real name. His name is Skater Guy. Gator Guy. Skater That's Guy cool. in Laramie, Wyoming. And he Gator just he wears just Wyoming. he just yeah. wears '90s Jinkos pants. Nice. All the time, just giant. Um, 
hockey jerseys and just skates around Laramie. Just Sounds like, like a kind of a pimp. Yeah, he's just he's sitting there. He just oh, it's I'm in the bus lane. Yeah, better kick a like do a little ollie real quick and then like Shh. leave. Nice. Yeah, he's just like you see him on campus. Sometimes you're gonna have yeah. you're gonna have good luck on your tests. Oh, you know, nice. He's at the parades. He's not part of the parade. He's just skating around. But like low key, he is part of the parade. Loki, we want statues of Skater Guy in this town. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. But nice. yeah, so ferrets. People own them. Sometimes. Sometimes they're just incredibly rare species to find in the wild. Um, you never know what you're going to get with a ferret. Yeah. You know, it reminds me, there's a plot in uh, Twin Peaks mm. where they um, try to save the pine weasel. I never watched Twin Peaks. Oh, but it's it's so good. I know. I as long as you, there's like this. eight episodes that it's, it, it's like objectively too long, but it's so worth getting through. It's okay. It's so good. Put it on the list. Top five television programs. Is Sopranos number one for you? Oh yeah, I'm on my four three watch boots. Okay. But the rules are on this rewatch. I, I do have rules, okay. so I don't. Okay, lose that's my good. mind. I have to watch every episode on the projector. No laptop, no phone. It's got to be on the projector. Okay. So that's been fun. You got to see Tony Soprano in all his glory. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no. Is there any reasoning why this old black-footed ferret... Um, couldn't isn't uh is extremely successful like what what's what's getting in the way so what's getting in the way what they're speculating again it's kind of hard to pin down this species just because there's like no information about them we're off the fly of our pants right now and we're trying to get them back in the wild a large part of it is their diet (laughs) you mean the seat of our pants the seat of my pants i don't know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the fly i love that i fly. i'm sorry i like that one fly. more we're on the fly of our pants <laughs> the fly of our pants man i think the there might thing... be some other thoughts swimming around in our subconscious at this point <laughs> maybe i mean i just i have our app still on the mind <laughs> yeah i mean launch is right around the corner i don't blame you. i know you say look out for it this holiday season <clears throat> this holiday season Yes. Um, so yeah, a big part of it is they think is the diet. Um, that's a pretty big problem because they like only eat and hunt prairie dogs. Like that was yeah. That's the thing in the wild that they do. Yeah. Can't really the same way. S- mm-hmm. Just munching on prairie dogs all day. <laughs> so they think that's a problem. It's always one of the other things that's always difficult to for reintroduction is the type of animal. So this is a carnivore species. Hmm. Um. Carnivores tend to be a little bit more difficult because they have right. instinct, hunting, all that stuff, being predators. Yeah. And when they're in the lab, it's pretty easy because you hand them the food, they eat the food, and then they're done. Sure. When you reintroduce them to the wild, sometimes those habits are hard to kick because mm-hmm. it's not it's not someone handed you your food. You have to go find your own food, and that's pretty tough mm. when... Exactly. I would just love it if someone handed me food all day. I, want I wouldn't want to go hand hunt. me food. I'm so tired of getting it myself. I'm so tired. Mm-hmm. And so that's like a big one. And I think also, like I've kind of harped on before, though, it's just this unknownness about them. Yeah. Um, when you just have to keep trying new ways. Um, Again, reintroduction can be pretty difficult. Re- reproduc- reproducing can be pretty difficult, especially if it is starting to do inbreeding, because then that can bring up any issues right. or anything like that. Um, certain diseases can definitely play a factor when reintroduced into the wild. So you release a little bit of a population out. They all get the same disease. They all die. So it's just trying to find the best places to put them where they won't just die. Reasonable. Mm-hmm. But, Reasonable. Yeah, as a... Because there's other, there's been other efforts of reintroduction. There's definitely still ongoing efforts of mm-hmm. species reintroduction. Definitely have to do a species, um, a deep dive on the California condor. One of my favorite stories nice. of bringing a species back from the brink of extinction. Um, wow! This is 
This is one of the ones that's like. I know. Say California condor is one of the biggest birds in North America, too. Not bad. Yeah, say about 10 foot wingspan on them bad boys. Ooh. A little bit bigger than our 18 inch, one pound ferrets. (laughs) Yeah, California condors are badass. They are pretty badass. But are they. Are they vultures? Mm-hmm. Yep. They so, are a vulture species. I love vultures. They're so gentle, you know? Never heard anything. Mm-hmm. No, they just they got this quiet like vibe about them. Yeah. They're a very quiet, ominous wing flap. Nah, it's 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 a neat bird. I feel like I, I don't see as many vultures out here. We have a ton out here. Maybe we I'm just not looking. Of, we have turkey vultures. That's the species yeah. that's most common here. That's what I mostly see. I love vultures. You know, they just remind you that things die. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Death is a natural part of life. Death is a natural part of life, but we don't want everything to die out. We want to bring things back. Well, yeah. I mean, species dying out, super not chill. Super no, not chill. That's why it's so exciting when you find these types of species, like the blackfooted ferret. Because then we're just, it, hey, they're not dead. It, that's pretty cool, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because hope if that you we're could, not um, walking things up. If you could bring back one animal. One animal. Yeah. I'd like the Carolina parakeet back. I think that would be sick. I want to see that. Because I, I think that parakeet is extinct. Yeah. yeah, we used to have tropical birds. That's cool. In North America. And, like, pretty recently did they go extinct. Yeah, 1920. Mm hmm. That's it's depressing. only 100 years ago. Like, pe- there are people alive who probably have seen that bird living. That's true. Not too many of them. No, they'd be like 103 mm-hmm. minimum. But I bet there's but like one person. At least. At least, but that'd be a cool. And what about you? Mm, probably just like a Triceratops. That'd be a good one. Yeah, Raptors. Hell no, the horrifying, tempting. Well, they're smaller. I say, what, what are you going off of Jurassic Park? Are we going off? Are we going off? I guess that's deep, true. Do do we prefer our our dinosaurs with feathers or no feathers? This is this is a pretty um, big question right now. I think, you know, it'd be nice Mm -hmm. um, if someone went ahead and made a really good dinosaur movie. Yes. And it wasn't in the Jurassic series because obviously that series has gone downhill pretty hard. If somebody made a cool dinosaur movie and the dinosaurs had feathers and the movie was good. All right. I think you found your next movie project there for Deer Enthusiast. Yeah, would you mind floating me like a hundred mil? Oh, it's gonna be all practical. Yeah, lower those costs. Let's see how much Jurassic Park cost. Which one? The newest one or the first one? No, the OG. The OG. God, that's such a good movie. It really is. And okay, sixty-three million. That's lower than I thought. No, well, well, it comes out ninety-one. Uh, 94, I believe, right? Okay. I think it was... No, 93. Okay. Uh, and adjust it for inflation. 127 million if you adjust for okay. inflation. There we go. Got one of Wow, up. that's 50% inflation since 93. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's only been 20 years. How did you buy a house? <laughs> You gave them, as you know, all the boomers out there will say, I shook them, I shook them hands, and we looked them straight in the eyes, and then they That's gave fair. us the house. And then you looked in Laramie, Laramie Wyoming. I yeah. saw, I thought this was the worst thing anybody could do. Outside Magazine put did an article on Laramie. Did you, like, stop. Yep, don't worry. Why would you we do that? About that one. Why would oh, you yeah, do that? that? Oh, Like, Larry that should be illegal. Forbes. Like, don't, nobody wants that. No, no one wants that. Well, you know, it's funny because at the same time, 
I was reading some social media posts, and one of them was like, hey, we just drove into Laramie. Why does this town look so sad? And I was like, oh. All right, so the rest really... of Wyoming. <laughs> I, was, I was like, because it's a fossil fuel industry state that's slowly dying, but no one wants to address that and look for alternative solutions for income for this state and the residents inside. But hey, you know, what do I know? I'm just what a do guy. I know? Just some guy. That's, yeah. that's the way to win every argument. You just at the end, hey, but what do I know? Hey, you, I you just work here. I, what do I know? Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add about the Blackfooted Weasel? Weasel Ferret, my friend. Blackfooted Ferret, sorry. Um, just, you know, always be on the lookout. You never know what you're going to find. and You never know. Take be... pictures there, bud. Exactly, and you just you never know what's in your own backyard. So explore a little bit, even if it's pretty close to home. Love it. All right, then. Well, I've been Boots. And I've been Tom. And thanks for tuning in to this episode of Made for Walk-In. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Ciao, ciao for now. Don't forget to uh, eat your vitamins and scrub uh, the back molars, floss daily, every night. Mm -hmm. You're going to get stuff out. It's not just about getting food out. It's about brushing all six sides of your teeth. So keep that in mind. It's really important. Mm -hmm major preventer yep. for gingivitis um you know a lot of us are struggling financially might not have money for dentist bills so what we do is we stay proactive yes food prep your lunches mm-hmm. that always helps i go for if i'm food prepping you know sometimes i go for the buffalo chicken wrap that's one of my favorites make all that's the good in advance uh, i go for chicken thighs which is much tastier in my opinion than the breast i also do steak okay. wraps much cheaper you know, yeah, much. Yeah, cheaper, more tastier. Better. Um, that's all the advice I'm gonna give for now. Next week we'll be back with a. Well, not next week. But we'll be back with a, more, more stories and more. Yeah. So thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.